Hello! Today I'm going to ramble a little bit about running and goals and life. When I first moved to Paris many moons ago, I found myself rapidly regaining all of the weight that I had lost in the year or so before I moved there, and I really couldn't afford a gym membership, so I decided to give Couch to 5k a try. It didn't do much more than like stem the tide on that whole weight thing, but it did make me see distance running as a thing that me and my body were capable of doing, which on its own was a very significant achievement. As a kid, I attempted cross country and I hated it. I went to one meet. Uh, about halfway through I started sobbing because my lungs hurt so badly. When I got to wherever it was and my father was standing along the course watching me, he saw me in tears and like stepped over whatever kind of rope fence situation they had and ran alongside me for the whole rest of the race just to get me to the finish line. I have no idea how far that actually was. This memory is hazy at best, but like champ parenting moment for you, dad. Thank you. In the spring, I did track, and that I loved. Sprints, but I did not love practices in which I had to run for what I felt was a very long time, and so I often skipped practices, which, as we all know, is a great way to get good at things. So for many years, I was genuinely convinced that I was simply not capable of running long distances without significant intervals of walking. This just wasn't something that my body was capable of doing. But I took up Couch to 5K anyway, and though I was moving slowly, I kept at it, and eventually I turned 90 second spurt of jogging into like 30 whole minutes. And then eventually that fell by the wayside and over the next couple of years I occasionally tried running again but then I hurt my knee and I was down for the count for a real long time and I was pretty ready to give up running for good until a couple months after I moved here to Missoula. I decided I wasn't seeing Missoula enough so focused as I was on destinations which were largely indoors. One of the great things that my little brother and I did while we were backpacking around Europe was letting his morning runs be a partial guide for what we saw and did each day. So I wanted to kind of borrow from that whole approach and also I was really fucking broke so I needed some free ways to occupy my time and also not be sitting all the time always. Uh, and so I downloaded another C25K app and I retaught myself how to run. And then I just kept doing it. That basic challenge of adding a few more steps each time I went out was strangely thrilling. It was really cool to have Runkeeper consistently affirming that this was my longest run ever. It was cool knowing that each literal step that I took was doing something that me and my body had never done before. In addition to never running long distances, I've also never strongly associated myself with willpower, but like assuming that you are able-bodied enough to do it, training yourself to run long distances is almost exclusively willpower. By the end of that first summer, I was running six miles in the morning a few days a week, which was huge for me. I got lazy about it as the year wound down, but when I went home for Christmas, my little brother and I got to talking about the Missoula Marathon, and he said that he would come out if I agreed to run it too. At that time, I was smart enough to only commit to the half because my longest runs were only like six or seven miles, but I agreed to do the thing, or half of the thing. And so in July of 2016, I ran my very first half marathon, uh, which was at that time the longest distance that I had had ever run, and it was also the most fun that I had ever had while running. Those first couple miles with the neon-colored herd spreading out before me was exhilarating and also kind of moving. Since that time, though, I committed to running a full marathon twice and both times wound up downgrading to the half marathon. First of all, that's like a real bad financial move because it is more expensive to register for the full marathons, uh, but also both times doing that left me with some feelings. It's been kind of a hard thing for me because while I am not very fast, I have been pretty good at forcing myself to get up absurdly early and give up weekends and kind of structure my life around the idea of making myself do this physically demanding thing for hours at a time. And so to repeatedly get very close and then have to acknowledge that I'm not quite ready to do the thing has been frustrating. I was about to say that this is sort of a sidebar, but it's really not a sidebar. It's sort of tied up in all of it. But in that first summer, I was attacked while I was running. And that has also had sort of a, a thread that is intertwined in all of this for me. It's also a thing that I'm still dealing with, and that is just endlessly frustrating to me that two years later, it still occupies as much brain space as it does. Like the amount of my life that I spend thinking about it is is frustrating. It's, <laughs> everything's frustrating. I'm sure I have better words for these things than frustrating, but we'll, we'll go with that. Even now, as often as I run, I don't think I ever get through a run without thinking about like the possibility of getting caught alone somewhere. Like this fear is literally the reason that I activated, hey Siri, on my phone. Who 
shall I help you call? I don't want to get too lost in that rabbit hole. I wrote a blog post about this a year ago that is frustratingly still pretty much as true now as it was then. But I will say that part of that and also the like bigger thing about my running goals is that I, all of it is about my relationship with myself. My relationship with running is very heavily wrapped up in the sense of agency and bodily autonomy that it gives me. Much of what I value about it is this idea that it is my body that I am making choices with and learning to do new things with and learning to appreciate in ways that I hadn't before. All of which is to say that there is this like big, heavy internal battle to recognize that I need to be patient with myself. It's all sort of wrapped up in my relationship with myself and ideas about what I am capable of doing and what I'm not capable of doing. But the thing that I keep coming back to and part of my point that I'm eventually gonna get to is that that isn't like a clear binary, like I can do this or I can't. Uh, rather, there's like a, a, a process. <laughs> For all the frustrations to be had in not being where I wanted to be at this point, it is quite undeniable that I am very far from where I started. This month I ran the Missoula Half Marathon again and it wasn't the full marathon that I planned on running, but I felt really good while I was running it. It was the fastest that I have ever run that distance and I still felt capable of being a person after finishing it, which was fun. It actually comes back to everything that I said in my last video actually about process and how that has always been the point. I sort of lost sight of that, but the point when I started was never to run any sort of race of any kind. It was literally just to say, okay, I can do this thing for this long. Now can I do it for 30 more seconds? Can I put one foot in front of another one more time? Now one more time. <laughs> Running has been and continues to be for me a really useful ongoing life lesson. Like one foot in front of the other is kind of a tidy place to end this here long rambling video, but it's also the case that my life is ongoing. And so these lessons are also uh, ongoing. They're things that I'm still kind of learning and internalizing. At the risk of being super redundant, it's a process. But for now, yeah, one foot in front of the other. Okay, bye.